Hello friends, so now here we will see some of the referral documents which are used in the risk management of clinical laboratory. So basically these documents can be used as a reference documents for the risk management. There are some standard protocols which are mentioned in these documents and that can be applicable to the risk management in clinical laboratory. So in all there are total six documents which are used in the risk management. So first document is ISO 14971 2019 document. This document is basically deals with the risk management in the medical devices. So here in this document are there are defined protocols, terminologies and principles which are applicable to the risk management of medical devices, their softwares and which is same applicable to the in vitro diagnostic devices. So basically this document is applicable to the all the equipment or the devices in the healthcare setup and also it is also applicable to the devices or the equipment in the medical laboratory and it is not only applicable to the hardware part but also to the software part so basically all the manufacturers of the medical devices require compliance with this standard iso 14971 2019 document to reduce the risk of harm while operating this equipment with respect to the securities electricity moving part radiation and usability so as to reduce the risk while operating the medical equipment the next document is iso 22367 2020 document and this document specifically deals with the risk management in the clinical laboratory or medical laboratory so what are the areas so what are the different areas in the medical laboratories such as pre-examination, examination and post-examination area and what are the different risk or the possibilities of errors, how to identify this risk, how to eliminate this risk and how to control and monitor this risk has been given in this document in detail. The next document is basically ISO 31000 2018 document which deals with the risk management principles and guidelines. So basically this document gives a broader view or a overall view of risk management in any organization. So this document will deal with in broad with respect to the risk management and the guidelines for risk management by a organization. This document also provides approach to manage any type of risk which is not specific to any sector or any industry. So this document can be used for the overall risk management in the organization all of the activities which are carried out. In the next document is ISO 31010 2019 document and this document basically deals with the techniques and tools of risk management. So it gives you idea with respect to the various techniques and tools which are used in the risk evaluation, risk monitoring, risk controlling, risk elimination or risk minimizing overall risk management. So this document deals with the process of planning, implementing, verifying and validating the use of this technique which are used in the risk management. The next document is ISO guide 73. This document basically deals with the vocabularies in the risk management. That means various terms and definitions with respect to the risk management, their meaning. So this document will deal with various terms and definitions and vocabularies that are involved in the risk management and the explanation and interpretations of these various terms. And finally, the last document in this category is a CLSI document which is published in 2011. This is a CLSI EP23A document which deals with the laboratory quality control based on risk management. So this document is basically deals with the risk management with respect to the quality control in laboratory and with the help of this document we can identify the risk in the quality control and we can manage the quality control plans with the help of risk management. So these are some of the documents which we, we will be using in a risk assessment or risk management of in the clinical laboratory. So here we have just seen the introduction of these documents as all of these are separate standard we are not going into the details of these documents but as and when required we will be using these documents for the risk management in our clinical laboratory that's all for now keep following for the complete series on risk management thank you